Hey. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, another episode of Isaac Square Tables, the webinar that's uh, uh, hosted by Isaac and uh, sponsored by Nuria. Uh, today's webinar is going to be cybersecurity on tracks training. Uh, sorry, train digitalization and cybersecurity. It's a very interesting topic. It will be presented by one of our uh, guest speakers. Um, let me quickly take you through the um, house rules. So once you join, please mute your microphone and stop sharing your video um, because that affects a little bit the overall uh, webinar performance. And uh, for the CPEs, please make sure that the name that appears on Teams is your first name, comma your last name, so we can make sure that you get the CPEs on time. Uh, this presentation will be indeed recorded, so um, the recording as well as the slides will be uh, released. Um, for this uh, session, we would like to have it as an interactive session as much as possible. So please use the raise hand feature if you don't know where it is. Next to the three dots, you will find um, the reactions and there is the raise hand or you can use the keyboard control shift and K. That will raise your hand and um, as, a, as a host for this evening, um, I will be uh, unmuting and, and allowing you to uh, speak. Uh, just a quick introduction about myself because uh, I forgot to do that in the start. My name is Ramzi Masri. I'm part of the ISAC Square Tables Committee, and I'm going to be your host tonight. Tonight, we have a very, very special speaker from uh, uh, NS Trains, and that's uh, Mind uh, Watsat. And I will ask him to introduce himself because I think I won't do him, let's say, um, a fair job to introduce him. Mind, uh, up to you, please. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Meinte Wilschut. I'm a uh, project manager at, uh, working at NS um, in the IT world uh, of NS. NS is a uh, big company, oper main operator here in the Netherlands. And uh, we drive in quite a lot of uh, trains. At times, we buy new trains. And at this moment, we are buying uh, a new train, the ICNG. That's the train here behind me, that one. Sometimes there are a few already uh, running in the, in the Netherlands, still test runs. <clears throat> and um, these trains, there's a lot of IT on board. And with IT, we all, of course also get cybersecurity as an uh, as an issue. At NS, we do quite a lot of it because we don't want that the, that the train is hacked. And um, my uh, one of my tasks was to uh, lead an, uh, a project to help the of to help to support the operator the of the sorry the the supplier. To get to deliver a cyber secure train and based on that experience i've made a few slides which i wanted to share with you and it's uh, you most of you guys i know a lot more of cyber security than, than me i am uh, i have a certification system but that's on a high level but what i want to share with you is that uh, if you are to, uh, talking about cyber security and you want to have a train cyber secure then you have to embedded in an environment of IT. And this environment, that's what I want to uh, talk about. So that you get some knowledge and some feeling about what it is if you are if you are uh, <clears throat> getting to someone who has to maintain that train and uh, start talking about uh, cybersecurity. So that's the goal of uh, tonight. The title is uh, Cybersecurity on Tracks. Um, and the what what is the the, the goal of uh, what was what I was uh, working on was how to keep a modern digitalized train cyber secure. Yep, I need you to start sharing the slides because. Yes, um, I'm going yep. to, yeah. Thank you. But thank you. <laughs> there we are. All right. In the old days, when we started with training, there was trains, we started with a steam train. And as a matter of fact, the steam train was quite a uh, self uh, supporting and self organizing uh, unit. It was standalone, everything was on board. You had the energy on board, water on board, people on board. And as long as there are tracks, you could uh, drive. 
also no security systems, whatever. I think the most cyber secure train later on it uh, became uh, different. This is the electric train, electromechanic. And here we get first really external uh, dependencies, except from, from the, the tracks. This, uh, there's uh, the dependency on the on the energy, of course, and also NS started um, with implementing uh, um, security systems, train security systems, so not cybersecurity, but security systems in the train, safety systems in the tracks. So here you see already that the train on itself can do a lot, but it has to be, it has become part of something that can be influenced from the outside. Um, then we go to the <clears throat> to where we are now, and that's let's say the digital train, digital electric mechanic. This train has a lot of IT on board, it's a lot of networks on board, so there's a lot talk between all kinds of uh, of systems in the train, but it's also part of a bigger system. It's also network connected to the shore. Data is going to the shore, and data from the shore is going to the train. So if you want to test this train, you cannot like a an, uh, an, uh, steam train, you can put it on the rail and, uh, and drive. No, you have to have connections to all kinds of IT systems on the shore to be able to run. So it's becoming complexer. That's the main message of this. What is, uh, if we are going to digitalization, then there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind that are different from the, let's say, 10, 20 years ago. For a mechanic, IT, it is, it, uh, IT is invisible. So that's really difficult. Normally, these, uh, my, these mechanics, they work with, with iron systems, with, uh, with all kinds of stuff, with wheels, with doors. With, um, and now there is some cabling, and that's it. And what's in it, you can't see. So that's really the different. IT, what I already said, the um, connections make the train part of a large system. So there's some of your freedom is gone. And you have continuously to think about, okay, if I do this, what will um, what will be the impact on other systems? IT has a high, high, much higher change rate than the train. Next to this is a uh, uh, slide that uh, I will exchange, uh, explain that. And and here we are on the, the let's say the Isaac and Orea um, area is vulnerable to uh, cyber attacks. It's also something totally different. At NS, what we're really doing is that we are talking to mechanics and to train drivers and to conductors to explain them something of this uh, cyber uh, cyber risks to make them aware of it. If we look at the change rates, then you see here three pictures of the same train, and it was introduced in 1983. In 2006, it got the main overhaul, and in 2024, 24, it will be replaced. 24, 25, and then, uh, then it will start. That is the lifetime of train, 40 years. And most times halfway, they totally strip the train, only the, the outside stays, and it is uh, being rebuilt. If you look at IT, for instance, the Apple, if you looked at, SO, at, at Apple in 83, we started with the LISA, which was a revolution uh, by that time. 2001, the iPod. 2006, the iPhone. iPhone 12 Pro 2020 and 2024, the self-driving car. You see that there's a, a totally different uh, dynamic, and what you see here are the, the apparatus, so more the, the concrete forms of, but an, uh, inside the IT is totally different. So that's something also people have to uh, get an understanding of, and uh, that the, let's say the mechanics have to understand IT is a totally different beast, and people from the IT have to understand a train is a totally different beast. You can't update a train every day. That's, I mean, that's impossible. There are a couple of, if we talk about digital train maintenance, there are a couple of, uh, of interesting IT, uh, interesting areas for, uh, for cybersecurity. The 
first one is software quality. A software has no form. You you can't you can you can't uh, touch it. You have to be very sure that it's, it's difficult to test how to ensure this quality. The next thing is okay when you have right the right software and uh, the right quality of software. How do you keep track on what is on the train? Because on the train there are thousands and thousands of software packages, and most of them have quite some. What I explained before here, uh, a, a quite high change rate. There's a lot of software, and what is important, there's a lot of there are a lot of trains. Because this train here behind me, in two years there will be hundred driving around on the on to the uh, to do the whole country. And also part of uh, Belgium. Even. So it's also the difficulty with trains is that, like that, what's different from an uh, from a data center, it's not easy to walk into the into the data center into the train because the train can be every, uh, can be everywhere. So you have to deal with hundreds of these driving data centers, and then you have to try to to get them if you want to be on the train and you want to update something. Of course, there is a planning, but Every day, the planning uh, is being jeopardized. Uh, there are changes, whatever. So, if you want to have really all trains for a certain update, that's quite a job. And then, cybersecurity for an S, of course, it is an impact on safety. That's the one. That's really, um, that's really very important. Happily, with a train. If a train doesn't understand uh, uh, anymore what's happening, then it stops. That's uh, the basic safety safety measure of all trains. If there's something unclear, then the train stops, and that's a safe measure because there's a system in the rails in the in the tracks, which says okay, when the, then the the track is being um, divided in blocks, like you call it, and if there's a train on a the block, then another train is not allowed to get into it. So if a train is stopped, it blocks a block, and no other train can get into it under normal conditions. So that's that's a quite safe. But if if you have this uh, a train that has, that is stopped, the Dutch railway network is quite densely uh, up, uh, with with trains. So immediately you have impact on other trains. Reputation is, of course, also a very uh, important aspect. We don't want that somebody put on uh, on the screens in the train nasty text or whatever, or maybe uh, even text that people get uh, get afraid or whatever. So, what's very important is is know your risks. So, on, if you want to have a cyber train, cyber secure train, then you have to pay. Good attention to all of these three, of course, to cybersecurity itself, but also to the other two. And especially to the, these two, I want to give you an impression on what it is and how we deal with it at NS. Software quality. Of course, you can't see it. We have to work in a different way. And the way we do is that we put quite uh, we start with the quality system, then we move to the process, and then we move to the product. And we put quite a lot of effort in the quality system, because if this quality system is okay, that is really uh, a very fundamental, uh, very good basis for producing good software. And this quality system has to do with all kinds of what, uh, how, how are we, are we uh, developing software, uh, how are we testing software, Then next we move to the processes, and that's the, 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 a lot of how to. How do we do it? Which people? Uh, which people? Which products? Uh, which documentation? And then in the end, we test the product, and surely we test the product. So we test it in like with the um, with the software on this train. We first have the supplier and even the the sub supplier who delivers uh, um, stuff. For, for instance, someone who um, a sub supplier that, pr that produces brakes, of course, in his factory, he tests it. Then it's going to our supplier and he will integrate it in a train or even what, what they do quite often is first on a test bench, they integrate the software, 
and they are going to test it. Then in a train, they are going to test it. And then again, NS is going to, uh, to validate it. So that's quite a process. Also in that product, uh, uh, product uh, checking. But the main focus, the main message here is take care of your quality system. If you immediately go to the product, you'll be late. And also, the, when you have the product already ready and you are going to test and you find the issues, then you have less time to uh, to correct them. When you see them in the beginning, you have yeah, in the end you will have a better quality. Testing. Very important is that you know the software configuration. When our team goes to a train, the first thing what they do is they check the software configuration. And if the software configuration is not right, they stop, they go back and they say, hey, this train is not well configured. Because if you don't have the right software configuration, then you don't know what you're testing. You don't know the interactions. Always. And it's, it's very uh, common wisdom, but especially here with the, these complex systems, have a test plan. So understand upfront what you are going to do. It's also communicating to all the others uh, who are involved, not only in the train, but also on the shore. Uh, sub supplier to supplier, supplier to, uh, to customer. Make a plan. And then afterwards, you've tested test reports. What has happened? And also, what was the when there were issues? What was the root cause of these issues? And when you deliver new software, release notes. We have on this train hundreds and hundreds of packages. So what we do with the uh, supplier is that they have what they call a functional train configuration, and that's let's say the total software stack on the, on the train. So every software package is there with a release no, a number and whatever identification. And that is being checked, and in the release notes, it's being told what has been changed since the last time. The supplier has to test what I've already said. Focused, if a focus, the sub supplier test, then we get the supplier test, focus on integration on the test bins, and then a full integration test on train level. And with trains, you, uh, it's really an, a world of difference between a single car operation and a multiple car. A single car is pretty easy, however, it is already complex. But if you have multiple cars, then you have more uh, more cars that have to interact correctly. So that's a, that's a totally different uh, dimension. Train has to be tested on the connections to the shore, to the train, and from the train. One of my projects is, is all the data that the train is producing. We want to get it on the shore so we can analyze it. And also when a train driver calls the, the support desk and says, hey, my train is the, has an issue, then they on the shore can see what the status of the train is because the data are pretty real time being transported to, uh, to, the, to the systems. But also there's also data going to the train. Uh, th that the train gets allowance to, to drive on a certain track, uh, sometimes speed limits and whatever. As a matter of fact, if you test, you test in a system. At this moment uh, in the Netherlands, we are uh, starting to, um, to move to an, an European rail train management system, which is a new protection system uh, when it is fully aware, when it is fully uh, implemented, then you won't see any uh, lights anymore, red and green, green lights next to the train, next to the uh, on the, next to the to the tracks. It will be all done electronically, but that means that also then the train gets really a, a limit, a, 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 a speed limit, and then depending on where it is, so it can be done very flexible. But that's also something you have to test. So you don't uh, then test the train alone. You don't test the train anymore in connected to the back office systems of the operator of an S, but also connected to the systems of the Dutch um, EATMS systems. So if you're looking for complex situations, get to the trains, get to the, yeah, get to the trains. We have, of course, with software qu quality, what also is important is how are you going to develop it? 
the classical, the waterfall-like, or the iterative, the HL-like. These are different ways of working. And it's important for the, because the way you deliver quality with it is, the, uh, is different. And it becomes even more complex when you have both. But we see that NS has the, the, the system for uh, travel information in the train. So on what is on the screens and what is on uh, being, um, being uh, communicated um, by voice in the, in the train. That system, that's the system uh, of NS. We build it ourselves, we maintain it ourselves, and we want to have that system on all our trains. So we have, for a, a traveler, we have a seamless experience in whatever train he has, he sees the same kinds of information, he gets the same kinds of information, hearing, seeing, whatever. We developed that um, uh, agile, so in a, a kind of iterative. We work with suppliers, and these suppliers have to deliver at a certain date, because that's what's in the contract. So they work in a kind of uh, of waterfall, classical. Too. We have to connect both, and that's not easy. Lease management is the last topic I wanted to share here about uh, software quality. It's very important not to know what is on the train now, but also what is the plan of the different sub suppliers of the supplier and also of uh, NS, of course, um, for future releases. What are the plans? What are the features there? How are we? Uh, what tests do we need? How many people do we need? How many time do we need? How many trains do we need? Features and fixtures, fixes, they're, they're always there. So to be prepared and to be able to plan, it's, uh, difficult, it's uh, important also to understand what's, uh, what's ahead. Software configuration, that is what I already said, this functional train configuration. So the train, the software configuration is the current status of, of the roadmap on train level. So please mind also that is on train level. In the older days, we had a software configuration, we had already software configurations, but we had a software configuration for the current situation and we had a software configuration for the upcoming situ uh, situation. So there were two in the systems. So it was on fleet level. And now with the ICG and with, uh, so with the new trains, because they are, uh, they are um, you, have, you have to manage it in a more, more detailed way. So if we have 100 trains, we have 100 trains, then we have 100 copies of, I don't know, two, three, four, five hundred uh, software packages. And so from every train, you want to know exactly what release is there of every software packages? Because sometimes when you do an update and there's one software packages in an uh, in an old version you didn't expect, you have tested it on the new version, everything fine, but it doesn't work with the older version. I see that I have a question. Yeah, I I, I wanted to ask a question. What can you do with the software on the train? Because we talked a bit about like the quality, which we all would agree needs to be in a good shape. We talked a bit about like the configuration, but really, what can you do with this with these software packages? Because I think this is where you know our cybersecurity heads will come out and say, okay, is it dangerous or not? Is that covered yeah. maybe later, or, or that's yeah. something we can talk about? You can do. Uh, let's say what I already said: if a train stops, that's not a problem. The really scaring problem is if train doesn't stop anymore. Because then uh, at a certain moment, the, tra the tracks is at its end. Yeah, the, the most tracks are somewhere if you, go to, if you go to the Hague, okay, you can drive on to Scheveningen and then it stops. And if the train doesn't stop, then you have an issue with it because then if it, it can't, if it can't stop anymore. So that is something that you can do if you, you can manipulate it. You can, of course, also manipulate uh, the way the train, the the the, uh, the, the way the train thinks uh, of its speed. So if there's a speed limit, let's say for 160 kilometer, and you can manipulate the train in a way that it thinks it's going 160, but already it's going 200. We had, I think, half a year ago, there was in um, in uh, the states, in the United States, there was an accident where a train in a curve went far too too fast, and then of course it it, it derailed. 
with also with people uh, with with, uh, with scheduled dead people. So these kind of things you can do. The other thing that you can do is that you uh, we have those nice screens on the on the train that you put nasty messages on it, scary messages. Dear passengers, there's a bomb on the train. It's nothing, but you can put the text on it, and then mm -hmm. there will be panic and whatever. Yeah, and, and can I ask you if like these kind of um, control to different aspects of the train can it happen remotely, or do I have to be on the train that we let's say try to exploit? <laughs> I know this. I yeah. know this sounds this sounds naive, but but oh, no, I no, think no. it will also put you know the the security you, you can, um, yeah. threat you can, you uh, can, in its own perspective. Can, yeah, you can do both. What I said is there there are also data going to the train. So if, of course, if you hack that connection, then you, you're on board. Of course, what we do is we test both. Because getting to the train, well, if a train is in a station, it's easy. Then you, you sit now, down next to it and, yeah, well, you have some time. With, with trains, because they are moving, the, 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 the time you are in the neighborhood of the train is something that, uh, that, uh, that is important. So if train gets... Uh, around of gets uh, gets um, passes you with 160 kilometers. Well, then the the chance is small that you can do something. But if it's on the station where it is still waiting for 10 minutes, of course you have those 10 minutes. More even more better if you are in the train sitting there like a passenger and you're working on your laptop. Then you have plenty of time. Then you have hours. And what also is possible is that you, when the in the, at night the train is parked, and when you are able to get to, to stay on board, and then of course the train is powered down, then so there are a couple of uh, possibilities less, but still you have there the, the option. So, and from the outside and from the inside, there are attack uh, areas, and all those attack areas are being tested. That's, that's good to know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. The, this, so the point is there's a lot of software packages and a lot of copies uh, because of a lot of strains. And so what we now have seen is that the idea that you can have exact the same configurations on all trains, trains of a float is an utopia. That's home. You do. So you have to keep track of what configuration do you have on train level. If you want to do that, you also have to, of course, to do have a strict control on the software uploaded to the train. One there is that the no train in the, in the NS we have that what we call the running stock software desk. And no, so they are the only ones who are allowed to upload software on the train. What we saw sometimes in the past that there was a sub supplier or supplier who said, oh, you have an issue. I have here on my uh, stick, I have an, um, I have a new version, let's put him on a train. Now what we are telling now our mechanics and everyone, that's not the way that we are going to do it. That's a risk. It should first be going via the rolling stock software desk. They do the verification, validation process, and they say, okay, this software can be uploaded. What you see is that our mechanics are most times very, they have a drive to get a train back on track as soon as possible because a train is chairs for the for a passenger and they want to allow the passenger to have a nice trip to have enough uh, chairs so they are sometimes they are uh, they want to cut corners and with software we say not allowed anymore under no condition we are really very strict on that because if we do if we allow that then we have then we have a leak in the system And what we have to understand is that uh, what you have to understand is that the software, of course, is quite dynamic. It's software, so it's easily to change, and there's a continuous drive for change from the operator itself, from the sub suppliers, from the sub sub suppliers, uh, ecosystem partners, governments, uh, stakeholders, whoever. A lot of people say, "Hey, this is nice with the strain. Let's do it in this way." And sometimes then you get very high pressures. So what we also do is that, of course, we have a, a very strict release management. Software is easily changed, and that's a risk. 
I think that's the risk also you should take care of in, or we should take care of in cybersecurity. One of the risks is that the stuff that we're talking about is easily to be is easily be changed. So people are very good, yeah, are very quick with okay, let's change the software, and there we introduce risk. So what you see now is that we're turning now to really to the to the core to cybersecurity, but to be able to understand cybersecurity in a high tech train. Uh, IT um, environment, you have to understand that there's something like software configuration and there's something like uh, the software releases. Cybersecurity, now we're getting on an uh, pause on, the, on common ground. What is important in a train is that we, the baseline is we have physical sexual security. That's where everything starts with computer minimization, firewalls. That's really not not phys uh, physical. I now uh, read encryption, whatever. Yeah, useful, but it's second tire. First tire is real. Something behind the behind the lock, behind the uh, something with with a lock in, and also with a proper lock. <clears throat> um, we worked on uh, with, uh, with this train last summer. The supplier put an uh, an hacker team on the train, and for a week. And what these guys did, the first thing that they did is they walked through a train and they looked at every place and everything that really smells to something that there's IT behind. And if there's something, a button or uh, whatever, they see if they can try to, if they can disconnect it from the, from the train, if they can get behind it. And then they look if they can put in, a, if they can dis disconnect the cable and put their own cable uh, in it. And then they have a connection. They start with their computer and they work on it. So really, the physical, uh, as long as it's physically protected, they can't do that. And also, physical protection to uh, get over it, to uh, keep it uh, takes time. And the longer it takes, the less uh, the less the, the chance you have. We have as a kind of anecdote. One of them found there's a button in the toilets, which uh, is for when, when you are not well. There's a kind of alarm button. And one of them found that, OK, he could disconnect that uh, alarm button from the wall and he could connect to the uh, to the cable that was behind. He has been two, two days sitting on the, on the toilets. His computer was standing on the toilets and he had a small chair. He was sitting before it and his two days he has been working in the toilet. He found a few things, happily not really uh, uh, really um, uh, very bad, but that's the way that they do it. What is also important is continuous monitoring for vulnerabilities. We have to know our assets and related to the assets, being aware of what's going on out there. So we have a kind of, we're building now a kind of service that reads, that uh, continuously looks out at what's happening in the world and then relates that if something is related to our assets, take action. If you have uh, cybersecurity in the train, then it's important that you don't only talk about product requirements, but also about the system and the process requirements. You remember that uh, that picture with the, uh, the quality system, the process, and uh, the product. That's really something that's uh, that's really important and. Next to that, also the awareness, the culture, so that people have in their mind, and all people, so it was the train driver, the train conductor, the mechanic, the people on the shore, they all should have in their in their mind. They should know that okay, when I change something, and then cybersecurity, does it have any impact? It's a kind of ecosystem that you talk about, and if yeah, if someone someone does not do the right things, then he, uh, the whole system is jeopardized. What's very important is, but there's also next news to uh, nothing new to uh, cyber security specialists. There's a risk-based approach. Everything we do, we translate back to risks, and then also to risks in our operations. If you see this uh, supplier we have, they did a. Uh, 
a study on the train and they told us uh, from everything, okay, these and these are the vulnerabilities. Because that was also something some five years ago that they did for the first time very thoroughly. And this is the impact. And then for the risk, we said, okay, understand. Thank you very much. And then from the impact, we said, okay, that's the impact that you see. But we are looking at the impact on our operation in our operations. Because we uh, we work on certain ways uh, in maintaining the train and in uh, managing the train and all kind of things. And then one risk that looks very big from outside can in our operations become small. Whereas another what you see when from the outside, if you don't know the train or our process, if you don't know our processes, say, okay, mm, not that important that we can say, hey, my wait, this is something uh, we should take uh, action on. We had, for instance, the, we found on um, somewhere in the train, train a weak password, and it was on um, uh, an apparatus that, that measures the speed. Okay, then we thought, hmm, every weak password, we, uh, our supplies and weak passwords should be uh, that should be improved. Then we took a look and we said, well, 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 the speed of the train, yes, okay, this that software is measuring the speed of the train, but it's also measured by the uh, the number of rotations of the wheels. And there was still another system which also measured. So there are three systems that measured the speed of the train. So if one system that says, I have a different speed than the other two, then the total system says, hmm, maybe we should have a look at that uh, system that, that, uh, that uh, reports a different speed. So then the risk already is, uh, is in, in, a, in a certain sense, is mitigated. If you if you translate everything back to risk, then you can work on uh, in that way. And the, the the other thing is that what we do is that we have a uniform process for this risk based approach for all our trains. So not only for the the ICNG, but also from the the trains that are now running, and also from the the, art and the older trains. We also working with that same approach so that we have one vision on our total fleet regarding cybersecurity. And that helps because otherwise one fleet is, let's say the newest fleets probably are best prepared, but the older fleets have, uh, because in those days, cybersecurity didn't, didn't exist at all. And, but if you have one system, one approach, then you can every, get every train on the same uh, security level. So that about cybersecurity. A few closing remarks. Integration of IT and OT, that's really a topic. We have, of course, we start with uh, with IT and we have at Tenessa, we have a lot of IT systems, we have a lot of experience in it. The last five, 10 years, operational technology, IT in apparatus, as in, uh, in systems, in mechanical systems, is, um, is getting more and more important. So, as a matter of fact, it is the same stuff. But it comes from different worlds. So there are also different uh, requirements and there are also different perspectives on, on software and on, uh, on data and cultures, the way you're working with it. So what we see now in Tennessee is that we see that IT and OT, OT are integrating. We have even in our organization, we see that parts of the IT that made systems for on the train is now being Anyway, is working very closely uh, with OT departments, with with departments, uh, technical departments, which are responsible for the OT. And I think that will, in an, in an, a year of five or ten, the di the difference won't be made anymore. And how we call it, I don't mind. But the point is that it is data, it is systems, uh, it is information, it is cybersecurity. Monitoring of vulnerabilities is, a, is, a, is an essential point so that you know your weaknesses as soon as possible as someone as something is uh, appearing. So you can have an, uh, a discussion on everyone on its own or it can be by a service. What we see at this moment is that some suppliers and also some parties are trying are starting to, uh, to, uh, to offer services on this. So they know your assets and they will look for around for you uh, what's happening. On the other hand, and this is a company which still lost it, does a lot of things uh, on itself. So, 
The discussion at our company still is ongoing. What are we going to do there? Digitalization, the process that we're talking about, is complex and promising. Of course, the whole Internet of Things, you get to know you train on such a, a deep level. That's something that we hadn't in the, with all the trains. Of course, with all the trains, we had experience. First, you don't know it, and then, then the, yeah, day after day, year after year, you get more knowledge, and people can get very experienced. With IT, it's more, it's more difficult. And with Internet of Things like practices, we can get to know uh, this train. At the NS, we have the data of the trains are transferred to two systems. One is the system for the, the for the, the help desk for the supporting the train drivers. So there's all kind of data going into it, and automatically then the support uh, guy can see what's happening in the train. He can interpret it and he can advise the the, the train driver. The other one system is that it is quite heavy, big data the, uh, environment. All the data is uh, going in there. And what we try to do there is that we find patterns. Patterns that I predict that something is going to, uh, to be going wrong. So what we're looking for is predictive maintenance. For instance, we had uh, uh, with one of our uh, uh, fleets, the train types, we had a problem that um, uh, the wheels and where the wheels is go, uh, going in the train, sometimes it got stuck. And when that's the case, when you're driving, it can become quite high, uh, hot, and it we we had you you got an uh, you got a fire there. So that's quite an uh, an issue. Of course, it's 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 dangerous and uh, and etc. But also when this train is standing still, you can't move it anymore because this wheel and probably also some adjacent stuff doesn't work anymore. So you have to get it off the tracks. No. The, if it is somewhere in the midst of uh, of a boulder or a, or a lake or whatever, that's uh, that's quite uh, something. So what they did is they were looking in into cases where this was happening, and they tried to find patterns of data, patterns of what was uh, of signals that uh, that you could see with the with this incident, and what you won't see if this incident is not happening. Well, there's quite a lot of data, so that was was an uh, was something searching and um, in the end they found a few things and by now it doesn't happen anymore because when there is a wheel where this risk is starting to uh, to get um, it is it's starting to, be, to become a to uh, really become a risk then we can see it and then we can say hey this train that should go to uh, in in one or two days or sometimes in uh, in a week time or so it should go to uh, to a maintenance shop so that's the nice thing of digitalization. And again, modern trains are part of an ecosystem. Many dependencies, even between organizations, an attack anywhere on the system is an attack on the train. So supply chain, cyber uh, issues are also uh, for the train. Yep, a quick question here, um, Inta. Basically, um, uh, Jack just put a question in the text. Is there not a center, data center with a repository of the software packages or images per train? Like, is there is there a centralized way to manage the, the software packages on the train? Similar, you know, to, to corporate IT. I know that uh, yeah. operational is a bit different, but is there a way to do it centrally? Yeah, yeah. We have a central store where all the all the software is and also all the information on the software. And let me see. Um, that is. Uh, I have to say that's for the software that we manage, that we make. The supplier, and probably also the sub-supplier, has the same, because we we don't maintain all the software. We have the central store for uh, for the software that we uh, maintain ourselves. We we have also very good questions coming in. So Robert saying, to what extent are you able to monitor all data traffic involved and ensure the integrity of data is not affected? And I give an example. If a sign is reported red, can you be sure it's red? <laughs> you know, uh, it's, yeah. it's a good one. It's a good yeah, one. that's, that's a very a good, good one. one. That's um, a diagnosis truth. That's really a very important uh, topic. 
what we uh, we also with uh, with this new train we pay a lot of attention to it so that if there is a one in the in the train that's telling uh, the brake has an issue that it is really that the brake has an issue and also it's the right brake that has an issue because this train has uh, tens hundreds of, hundreds of brakes that's one thing so that's diagnostic truth and that's something we test we test we test then the other thing is that uh, we also want to see it on the shore, so we also have to, so we transport the data to the shore, and we have also to be uh, that if the train produces in one, that it on the shore is also one. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say silly comment, but I think maybe it's just me. Maybe who knows? Maybe one of our participants has the same idea. We, you always use the term onshore, which I think means the data center for NS or a cloud, I don't mind. Yep. And and what you think goes offshore or like how you refer it to is the on the train, right? Is was it's the data on the move. Yep. I just wanted to to explain this to myself and others to just to make yep. sure I got yep. it right. Um there is a couple of really nice questions, let's say uh follow ups to what we were just discussing now. So what is really the responsibility of the train staff, the machinist and the conductor from an information security perspective? And and do they have like a specific task? That's the second question. Or is there a black box for their actions? I guess that was the, um, the Maris is the one who sent that question. So uh, the Maris, if you, if you also want to unmute and, and maybe discuss that question, because I think that's a nice one, uh, that would be really great. We can't hear you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This, yep, bit, yep. this yeah. bit will probably yes. better. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. There's a lot of information security measures taken on in the train, but the conductors and the machinists are there in the train. Do they have a special task to make sure things are safe? Do they see something? Do they get signals from the information from the systems? Or can they completely in ignore it? And is things well, handled off, uh, on shore? Let's say they are not part of the cybersecurity uh, yeah, ecosystem, but uh, what is very important is that they understand what cybersecurity is. So we do we work on awareness that they don't. For instance, a, a train uh, driver, he is able to he has a, he has locks to uh, to many uh, to many cupboards, and so he is able sometimes to get somewhere where a, no, a normal person is not allowed to get, and he has to be aware that if there is an, uh, a connection. That he shouldn't put his uh, his handy on the, on that connection or whatever or his computer, and that's something that we tell them. Okay. But they are they don't have a task and a responsibility in the cybersecurity defense. Let's put it in that way. Okay. Thanks. Nice question. Thanks. I, 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 Thanks. I guess also the the rest of the question maybe needs to be answered, which is like. Is the black box for them? So I, I I assume that's similar to like the recording boxes on top of the aeroplanes, the black boxes. Maybe that was uh, yeah. no, yeah. But what no. I meant is, what is security okay. a black box for them, or are ah, they okay, aware of? So yeah, no, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, I there and as some may say, there is a kind of black box on a train. And that's an, uh, a device that is also on uh, on most trains, and that's a, that's a device that uh, keeps uh, data. And so, if there is an issue, then you get to you go to that device, and uh, you can read on that device what has been happening the the last I don't know half hour something like that. So, a kind of black box is also there, Thanks. and that's becoming even more and more important now. Is we have now more systems, so also. Let's say speed is, of course, sort of pretty obvious. But what also is a uh, thing is that we have uh, more and more trains have cameras on board and also front camera. So if there is a collision, then you want to have the last uh, the last pictures of what has been what uh, what happened before the, the incident. So that's something that is growing. Thank you. Yep, thanks. So um, the question was maybe a follow-up on the very, very first question about centrally managing software. So we talked a lot about, let's say, the train and the components and, and how we need to keep them uniform in terms of patches and upgrades and everything. Um, but there is also the attack vector on the central data centers where you can log in. 
Can you maybe give us a small idea about what what efforts are happening over there? I know this is more traditional kind of IT environment, but uh, could you please explain the question? I'm not sure that I understand it so, correctly. So, so if I understood like the and and again, uh, Jack, if you would like to unmute and and maybe elaborate on that one, please go ahead. And I see also uh, Peter, but let's let's finish that question and move to you, Peter, for for a second. Um, the idea was. There was a question, is there not a central data center with a repository of software packages or images per train? And then there was a follow up. So that would be an attack surface too. If that if that place is hacked and well, someone, let's say, right. inserted the bad image or something over there, that could also be a, an attack surface. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I meant, uh, Ramzi. Yep. <laughs> then, okay. um, that's of course that's a risk. Uh, at this moment, the the trains that uh, are now in the Netherlands are still from the supplier, so they, they are making uh, they're driving around now and doing their tests. And then we will have a uh, test. We will then still use of the the train the trains of the supplier. And then at a certain moment, we will accept the trains, and then the trains are our responsibility and our we are the owner. And at that moment, the software is also getting to us. At this moment, it's at the supplier. So yes, there is an there is an uh, there is somewhere a store. If you get on board, then you can have an uh, then you can change the software, and then that uh, software will be rolled out to every train, and that will also be in uh, when when we have it. Again, that's the the whole issue with supply chain uh, cybersecurity. Yep, I um, I, um, I want to give the floor to Peter. Please unmute yourself, or if you'd like me to help, I can unmute you and go ahead yes. with the question. Thank you, Mainte. I get a very warm feeling about how you tell that IT and security will help to have trains running better and more and more safely. But on the other hand, I wonder, aren't we going too far? Because there will be no room anymore for common sense. For example, I think it's about two or three weeks ago, on Sunday, there was an IT uh, failure and no trains were running. All trains stopped. No, there were no alternative uh, traffic, so all people had problems. I spoke with a train driver the day after during sporting the evening, and he said, well, it's a little bit ridiculous because we were able to drive the train from one station to another and back. So we were able to transport people, but it was not decided then. What's your comment on this? Um, I don't have uh, more details on what was happening than uh, this train driver have had and you have. My, um, they decided uh, to stop the, the, the traffic of trains. And that was because the systems that went down were the, were the systems that helped uh, uh, adjust the, the system on the, 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 let's say, so the whole train system on trains. Where are my trains and where are they going? And on people, staff, train drivers and train conductors. And it's already a hell of a job to get those two together because we have in the Netherlands a very complex uh, system with trains okay. running from uh, yes. from and and at a certain moment these systems didn't work properly anymore and at that moment they made a decision we don't know where the trains are we don't know where our people are so we cannot we cannot optimize the system anymore and if something is happening we cannot we cannot adjust it anymore and we stop i think they have uh, uh, thought about it so I assume they, they had uh, all kind of uh, of arguments to do it. It was quite a heavy measure, because I don't think that it's not go, it's not uh, happened that often, often happily, uh, because also yeah, it's it's a huge impact, and that's all that they know about it. What I uh, say to everybody is, I think there are already three parties who are doing research into this from the government and of course NS itself is looking into it and also uh, uh, Pearl is looking into it. Let's wait what is coming out to it. What I see at what NS, the, the culture of NS with problems is, 
especially with when uh, I know it from the really the trains, if there are accidents with trains, then they go, they dive into it and they want to understand the root cause. And the root cause not is Jan did a uh, false move and so the system went down, but the idea is why was it happening? Why was it possible that Jan did a false move? Mm-hmm. What in the environment was happening that Jan thought, okay, I have to do this. And in that way, we do always research, and this research is, I don't know, it's not public, but it's anyway within the company, it's, uh, it is shared. And I expect that for, in this case, it will be the same. So I can't answer your question, but I'm sure that, uh, if we say in Dutch, the onderste steen will bovenkomen, uh, so that they will get, they will dig into it, get to the root cause, and it will be uh, made public. NS is also a public company. All the shares are with the government, so these kinds will come public. I can say it's very easy for me to comment on this, and maybe there were possibilities, but the question is, was there enough time and was there enough, were there enough people available to arrange this? And I can imagine that the people who were in charge then say, well, if there's no transport available, that's a problem. But if we try to do our best and we get an accident, that is even worse. So, yeah, thank you for your answer. My pleasure. We have another couple of questions. One is about packages. Um, I think, uh, Marine, would you like to, to unmute and ask or should I relate that one? So it, it was um, basically regarding when you mentioned there are many packages on the trains and many different configurations. So the question was, how is this secure to ensure the package and or configuration is indeed the correct one? And is it from NS? Uh, that, that, was, that was the question. Is it is it done by, for example, a uh, digital signature? Um, or is um, it like um, a file integrity? Like how, how, how is the validation what, what process? Mean, let's say when, when um, there are two things. At this moment are the trains from the supplier and I'm not sure how he uh, does it exactly. What I know that on our side is that we, if we put an, um, a train configuration on a train that we work with hash totals. And in that way, we control what kind of, uh, if the software uh, package that we install is the same as that we tested. Okay, so so it's it's now, let's say, the responsibility of the third party. And maybe after the handover, this will be responsibility of NS, right? Exactly, yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, there is a general question. I think it's mainly related to cases where the train could be compromised. So um, I guess that's a blended question. In case of emergency, can the train driver have manual override? And of course, like following protocols. So the, the, basically, I think a scenario might be a good one. As you said earlier, you said like maybe someone plays and that train is like at 200 when it should be at 160. Um, is there a way for the train driver if by any means he was able to uh, detect that to to intervene i'm not the technical with the train i'm sorry yeah. so I, I hope it is there yep. i assume it is there but i, I can't answer it okay no what, what we see most times no no then i'm only speculating no i'll keep my mouth shut. no no it's it, 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 it's fine i i was i was more interested to know how for example in that scenario it would be detected because as humans, we don't really realize the difference between 10 kilometers, you know, when you're driving your car. Yeah. You don't really realize it. And in a train, it's even more because the train driver is on two uh, tracks and he knows yeah. that it's okay. Um, what what so, I can say is that uh, if the train is driving too fast, then there is from the outside, there's a system which detects, if, let's say, if too fast, not. But if a train, what I said is that the track is being uh, divided into blocks. And if a train is getting into a block that is already occupied, then from the outside, it's going to be stopped. Maybe someone who is uh, uh, driving often with a train has experienced that sometimes in the midst, train is stopping and also stopping quite, uh, quite, quite uh, fast. So it's really that, not, not with this noise, but anyway, it's faster than you would, than it's stopping at a, in a station. 
And most times then, at that time, the train was driving too fast. And the outside system has warned the train driver for one or other reason he hasn't reacted to that. And then the train is stopped. Totally stopped. And that's something where the train driver can't do anything to it. The only thing is he can wait till the train has stopped. Then the train is deblocked. And then he can start again. Okay, so there are external fail safe exactly. safe controls that that's actually good to hear because that uh, maybe we don't really need to rely on the driver himself and manual intervention but um, um that's that's uh, that's good i think for the sake of our time i would take the last question and then we uh, conclude our webinar so um also jack is is asking are you considering going to the public cloud very popular these days or is that not allowed because you're a critical infrastructure of the netherlands um, I can't answer that question. I'm okay. sorry. No, I, I was no knowledge about that. Sorry. Uh, I, 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 I was expecting because that's that's also a bit uh, strategy and we, we, we don't know if that's possible to share. So, uh, I, mean, I would like to thank you so much for today's uh, talk. It was very interesting. And I would like to thank everyone for attending uh, tonight. Uh, the next thank is actually a webinar. So, yep, sorry, can you repeat that, please? I said thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the questions. Yep. Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, I wish everyone a great evening and hope to see you again on an Izeka webinar. Um, I think the next one will be in May, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Thank you so much.